Okay, great. Okay. Sean Fitzgerald from Observe What Is Is. Uh, the, pl the subject of this video is on business owners. And I've got Billy here with me. He owns a, a fencing company. And I'm going to ask him a little bit about his business and his experiences. Please, Billy, won't you give us your introduction, your full name, your age, are you married, and a little, a little bit about yourself, your hobbies, or what you like to do uh, when you do it. Okay, I'm Willy Labaskagny. I'm married, got three kids. Uh, we live in Palm Lakes. Um, I've been in KZN for five years. And, yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Willy. Uh, what is the nature of your present business? What's your company name? It's Value Fencing. Value Fencing. Yeah, we and do PVC fences, okay. balustrading gates, lattice work. Is that the nature of your business? That's it. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Uh, have you ever owned a business in another field? Yes. No, Can I you please a, explain that? I had a music, uh, a music shop and a sound staging company in Potsdam for about 10 years. And I sold that about five years ago and I moved here. That's an artistic business. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, like music. That's artistic. What? What might? What's such a big change for you? Um. Well, everything became too big at that stage, and I split it up into two businesses, and I sold the staging company. And then a few months later, the same guy made me an offer to buy this music shop as well, which I wasn't thinking of selling, but he made me such an offer, sold it. And then I moved down to KZN because that's where I've always wanted to be. I gave myself a few months to look for something to do, but struggle to get something here. There's no money this side compared to that side. And then my neighbor put up PVC fencing, which is a brand new thing at that stage. And I tried to, to get into it, um, phoned the owner, and he didn't want a partner or anything. And a bit later, he phoned me and said he's selling franchises, and I bought a franchise, and that's how I got into it. <laughs> and you, you kind of, you got this from your neighbor. You saw the fencing from your neighbor, and that's yeah. what intrigued you with it. That's it, yeah. And I saw it, and I was looking for something to do. I couldn't find anything. Okay. And PVC at the coast, you know, there's nothing to compare. It won't rust, it won't rot. So okay. that was the way to go. So that covers my, my, my next question to you is, why did you start a business in this field? And... That's the reason you yeah. you wanted PVC. You saw your neighbor and everything. Yeah, no, I saw an opportunity because this is. Is there a big opportunity new. for this? Yeah, no, well, there's no competition. There's is there no else. competition? There's nothing. nothing. The only other thing is aluminium. It's way more expensive, My and goodness. it's um, it's it's a flimsy product compared to ours. Wow. So <laughs> what? It was just the opportunity you saw. That's it, a yeah. huge opportunity down here. Okay, I'm going to ask you a little bit about that later. Um, okay. All right. What are some of the did you face any challenges to start this PVC business? This, this yeah, it was brand new in the country, um, so it's, it's difficult. If everybody thinks PVC plastic, which is not, it's a total different thing, but they think it's flimsy and it's plastic and it's not strong. You know, how can you make a fence out of plastic? It was very difficult in the beginning. So it was just convincing people. Yeah, so. no, you've got to convince them. So you've got to put up sample pieces yeah. and let them shake it and feel it. You know? So this is a big. Would you say that was your biggest challenge in yeah, starting it? Yeah, that and, and obviously finance. Finance. Is it? A, is it? A, how much of the top of your head does it cost to own a business? You don't need to give me exact prices. What? Well, what would a person do to have your set? In up? my opinion, you can't start any business with less than one and a half million. You're wasting your time. Okay. Okay. You got to have the premises. You got to have the materials. You got to have the stock, the tools. Yeah. Would one and a half million get the setup you've got here, kind of, just as a start? Well, to start off to with, start yeah. off. Okay, fair enough. One and a half million, guys. What's, uh, what are your present benefits to owning this business, to yourself? <laughs> not much, really. <laughs> no, no, <that's laughs> not fun owning your own business. Is it not fun? Explain. It's way better working for a boss and knowing what you're getting in. Wonderful. Especially these days, you know, there's a lot of things, like you mentioned, there, just now load shedding. Now, that takes a lot of productivity off. Um, you guys in the field can't work. you factory can't produce, um, a lot of things, staff as well, it's, there's no such thing as reliable staff anymore, you can't find decent people, you got to put people in, train them, they run away, they steal, they run away, it's, it's a nightmare to find decent staff. <laughs> Wonderful, um, thank you. And then to get stock in, that's the other thing, <laughs> to yes, get enough stock, because yeah. we, we buy through the franchise, but you bring in a container at a time, a container is half a million. Sure. And you don't sell the full container before you need the next container. So you've got to have a lot of money behind you, which was a bit difficult for me because I didn't have it. <laughs> but um, no, it could just grow as you go. Eh? So so would you actually, if you had a choice with hindsight, would you actually go and work for somebody else? If, you, if, if, you, I, if, if I get you, the right job with the right, the right salary any day. Are you serious? Any day. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> 
I'm glad you 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 saying that because uh, you know we it's nice to have different opinions on our channel. Thank you, Billy. Yeah, it's not fun. Eh? <laughs> it's okay. hard work. Right. See, if you work for a boss, you you can work whenever you want. When you feel blue, you can stay at home. <laughs> if you wanna loaf, you can loaf. If you work for yourself, you gotta be there all the time on top. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, Billy. Um, okay, I'm gonna your present challenges you covered really uh, staff uh, times uh, no time to yourself. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go on to that with you. Uh, would, I'm gonna ask you this question: This type of business, this PVC business with the with the fencing, would you recommend this to people that wants to start a business as a business? Yes. Yeah. Well. It's one of the few businesses that, that actually grows like we're growing. You know, it's, it's new. There's no competition at this stage. Um, yeah, no. It's the opportunity is still yeah, there. No, Are you getting no competitors at the moment? Nobody's... Nothing at this stage. So we got the, the base supplier. Mm -hmm. We've got the the base supplier with, um, how can I say, well, he only supplies us. He, yes. No, no one else can get from them. Wow. There are other suppliers, but their quality is bad. Okay. And then the other thing is we already settled in the market. We've been running for five years. We've got 20 franchises countrywide. So huge. to try and get in and, and get huge. a slice of that pie is going to be a bit difficult. It's huge because they got to go up against the name that you've established. That's am it, I yeah. correct? Okay. Future prospects. Yeah. This business, huge opportunity. You yeah. say it's going to replace the aluminium field. Would it do that? Yeah. We've already, in most of the estates, Mount Etchcombe Estate and all those places, we, the aluminium picket fencing and those things were very big. They mm. we we've taken that over. They don't even aluminium picket doesn't even make aluminium pickets anymore. Sure. Sure. So we we're taking over. Um, so now, would you say that those guys in the aluminium field uh, do they know this or are they just blind? No, well, they know well, what's they, happening. They can't get to our they, price and our quality, okay. so they're pulling out. And they can't, yeah, and they can't get back they around it because they stuck with aluminium. This is exactly. all they know. Mm. All right. Okay, tips and suggestions from a person like you in hindsight. Uh, somebody starting a business, but not necessarily maybe in your field, but uh, 19, uh, once coming out of school, maybe get some money and start, or somebody who's older, 40, 50, and wants to start a business. What would your tips and suggestions be? Not to start a business. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends who you are. You know, It depends on yourself. Not yeah. everybody can run a business. You know? yeah. it's, it's the same thing as the staff issues. You know? Certain people are workers. Certain people are lead. People are leaders. You know, if, if you have the balls, you you want to put in your 18 hours a day, and you're willing to sacrifice some of your weekends, then go for it. But if you if you want to work nine to five and, and be fishing four o'clock, then, then don't do it. Then go work for someone. <laughs> Thank you for that advice. Thank you, Billy. Anything else that uh, I've missed out that you would like to add on what we said? Something I've forgotten. Did I have everything? Did I no, cover I everything? <laughs> okay, great. I'm going to do a little expo on your business now. What makes and what makes Billy or your company unique to everybody else? And I'm thinking, obviously, it's the PVC. Yeah, well, the product. The product, there's, there's yeah. There's nothing to compare. Yeah. There's, there's no maintenance lasts forever. Nobody else can give you even a five-year guarantee. We give a 20-year guarantee. Um, all the franchises are owner-run. We're very, very hands-on. We know what's happening all the time. So, yeah, is it a good franchise to be? Is it yeah. good to be in a franchise? Oh, well, if I can put anything else on the table next to me, I'll pick this again. There's okay. To touch it. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. Um, all right. Um, I'm going to I'm going to ask you for your contact details to, for the for the viewers so that you know they can maybe get hold of your company if they need the PVC. Is it PVC? Am yes, I right? This PVC it, yeah. fencing and things like that. So I'm going to ask you for your full company name. I'm going to ask you for your full address and your contact details and a website if possible. Okay, well, I've, I've got the Durban North Belito franchise, but there are 20 franchises countrywide. So the best is go on to the website, valuefencing.ca.za, mm -hmm. and then all the franchises are listed there. Um, the main franchise or franchise always been banned from the Margate franchise. Um, and our contact details, Durban North, phone number is 031 569 4241 and my email address is valuefencing at gmail.com yeah thank you Billy um that gentleman in that owned the market he's the owner of the franchise he's the, he's, he's the franchise or he started it he started the franchise. okay so and he must be doing quite well for himself yeah, seeing no, this is unique it was yeah, how did done, he come about what, what did he... he he's retired actually and then he went overseas to his sons in America and then okay. he saw it there. He saw it there. It this is a worldwide trend. Yeah, no, all, over, 
Yeah, in America, something like 60% of all fences in America is BEZ. That's how big it is. So the aluminium fencing business is really just falling yeah, away. Yeah, that and the wood. You know, the wood steel too. Steel as well. Steel rusts. Uh, wood rots. You get wood borer. There's so many things that happens to all the other fencing. Very interesting uh, interview with you, Billy. Uh, we are at the end now. This is Sean Fitzgerald. Observe what is, is. Um, just please leave your comments and suggestions if you like the video for, uh, for with uh, with me from Billy and contact him. Yeah, I'm sure he can, you know, give you, if you need his service. Why don't you end the, the interview there?